All right, so in this session, we are going to talk about uh, how to add JWT validation as middleware to our project. Okay. Uh, by the way, there was uh, one small change, I think two small changes that were missing from the previous session. And that was when we are setting up the JWT token when we are authenticating on the slash auth endpoint we also need to append bearer to the x auth tokens value bearer space and then we append the token this is kind of convention and we'll also find out that it's useful and sort of actually required for us to be able to use off the shelf middleware that is available as part of the echo framework so this part is uh, a standard practice as well as needed for JWD middleware okay so this was something that I missed so now when you authenticate your token will not only have the token but also it will have the token value appended with prefixed not appended prefixed with better space okay so it, it, it kind of means that it's a better token okay and uh, there was other thing that I wanted to add was in our create user so when we are creating a new user okay after the user is created we should also give them the token so it is like when you sign up you are also signed in by default this is kind of optional but it's it's a good and it's a useful feature uh, to have okay so I also added this part where I just copy pasted this part from here and added it here okay so now when the user is created it is also given the token the JWT token as part of its response header see this code of course you can modularize it now uh, you can see that there's a little bit of duplication at places you can of course take it out into a separate function I'm not doing that for the sake of simplicity all right and I think uh, these functions would evolve over time and you would have to add more things to it so better have it in a separate function all right now having done this let's get back to our main.go file and here what I've done is I have actually added a middleware so inside middleware from eco framework echo framework we have this JWT with config method which accepts JWT config all right and here it accepts two things that we'll have to provide right away so one is the signing key the signing key is something that we defined in our config file right so signing key is our JWT token secret we sign our token using this secret and this is something that we maintain only on the server side this is not known to anybody outside your server all right uh, never to the client never and uh, then you have this token lookup so token loop of lookup actually is asking you to tell it where the token is stored. So is it stored in the header, in the query, in the cookie, in the parameter where? Well, we are storing it in the header. Okay, so that is why you use header as uh, the key here and then column and then the value would be the name of the token which is XOTH token here. All right. I'll probably actually uh, take it out into a separate constant and uh, use it elsewhere but for now just uh, I'm, I'm using the hard-coded value all right so you could also store the JWT token into cookie as well it, you, you can also store it in query header is like a standard practice to use it in the header okay you can also store it in the cookie but in that case make sure that your cookie is uh, the HTTP only cookie so that way when your client has actually loaded the response your browser will not be able to display it because the cookie has that HTTP only flag because of that your client side JavaScript will not kind of have access to it and that will help you prevent some uh, XSS attacks cross-site scripting attacks okay so that was that so uh, doing this with this method we get uh, the middleware function in return right also let me give you uh, let me show what this jwt config uh, looks like so it's got a lot of things okay 
uh, I'm using signing key which is uh, required to validate the token okay so that's how you validate the token of course you can decode the token anybody can decode the token over the internet but we need to validate that it's been not tampered with and that's using the signing key and signing key is it is signed using a private uh, secret that only is known to the server all right you could have a list of a slice of signing keys which is here but we are not using we are just using a simple method right now okay Additionally, you can also tell them which signing method is used. We are not using that either. We are using the token lookup and you can see that you can actually use header, query, param and cookie here. Odd scheme is optional, but you can see that the default value is better. And that is why we have to generate the token. When we generate the token, we have to prefix it with better. And that's what we were doing here. All right. And that was it. That's that's that. That's your middleware. And now I've gone ahead and added it to delete, put, and post method as the third argument. So the third argument is like a variadic uh, argument. It accepts a list of middleware. So I've added uh, middleware specific to this endpoints and not to get or uh, get ID of the product because these are the ones that actually modify your database, right? So. We just want to protect this. Of course, you can add them here as well, but our uh, business case is right now is simple enough that it's only when you modify the product, you have to make sure that you are uh, an authentic authenticated user with a valid JWT token. Okay, so let me get back. Let's get you back to the insomnia. All right, so let's uh, try creating uh, this uh, product here. Okay, so I'm using the post method, the product send point. Okay, in my headers, I don't have anything right now. So I should not be able to create the product because I, I'm not passing the token. And this particular endpoint is protected. Right? It's expecting a JWT token to be passed, right? So in, in that way, it's protected. So when I do send, I get missing or mail from JWT. Pretty correct, right? That's what I was expecting. Uh, in the header, I don't get anything except for correlation ID here, which is uh, we already covered. Now I'll have to get the JWT token. In my database, I don't even have the users right now because I'm starting off with a clean slate. So let me st try to create a new user this time. Okay. So there's my user name and password. Okay. And when I click send, I should be able to get the header here with my JWT token. And you can see that I have the XO token that is the JWT token. So I have a new user and that is this better auth token, right? So now I can make use of this token while it is valid, which is 15 minutes. Okay. And I can again uh, go back to my post endpoint, a product endpoint. And now this time I can uh, make use of this token. I'm just gonna copy paste it here. Okay, so it's there, copied. And let me get back to my product endpoint and copy this over, sorry, not this. So let me copy this over here. Okay, so now, because I have the token and uh, it's a valid token, so I should be able to create the product. And yeah, that, that it is. So I'm able to create the product, right? And the same way, the other endpoints will also behave the same way, right? So I can actually come here and do put, change uh, the signature here to USD, change the payload here to USD, the currency. And when I do send, it says method is not allowed. Okay, so that is fine. I think I'm, I'm missing something. Method is not allowed. How could it be not allowed? Put products and yeah, I have to give it the ID. I didn't give the ID, but I can get back to the database. Uh, get the ID from here. Mm, or I think I can just call get products, which is going to give me the ID. And I change it to put. Okay. I still have the value dot token and it's been updated, right? So that's exactly what I wanted to show you. And that is how you achieve the JOT authentication.
right using the middleware so now i'll see you in the next session till then goodbye